Let's take a look at time questions. So question number one, we need to convert uh, the following amounts of time. We can use a calculator, but to be honest, most of these are pretty easy. So 60 seconds in minutes, well, we know 60 seconds is one minute. And if we know that there are 60 seconds in one minute, well, how many 60s go into 180? 180 divided by 60, maybe you can do that in your head or use a calculator, that is three minutes. 60 minutes in hours, well, that is one hour. Um, since we know that 60 minutes is one hour, how many 60s go into 240? 240. 240 divided by 60 is four, either do that in your head or on a calculator. We know that there's 60 seconds in a minute, so 300 divided by 60 is five, so that is five minutes. Uh, 3,600 seconds in minutes. Again, we know that 60 seconds equals one minute. So how many 60s go into 3,600? So our calculation is 3,600 divided by 60, and that is 60. 24 hours, we all know is one day. So 72 hours, well, we need to be thinking how many 24s are there in 72? So our calculation is 72 divided by 24, so the answer is three. 7,200 seconds in minutes, well we know 60 seconds is one minute, so how many 60s are there in 7,200? So the calculation is 7,200 divided by 60, so the answer is 120 minutes. And 168 hours, what's that in days? Well we know 24 hours is one day, so how many 24s go into 168? So the calculation is 168 divided by 24, and the answer is seven. So all of question one, uh, you could have used the calculator for, although a lot of them you probably could have done in your head. Question number two, again, we can use a calculator here. Uh, so what is uh, seven days in weeks? Well, seven days is one week. Since seven days is one week, how many sevens go into 56 days? So our calculation is 56 divided by seven, which is eight, so that's eight weeks. 12 months is one year. Two weeks is how many days? Well, one week is seven days, so two weeks is gonna be twice as much, so that's 14 days. We know that 12 months is one year, so three years is gonna be three lots of 12, which is 36 months. Four hours in minutes, well, we know that uh, one hour is 60 minutes, so therefore four hours is gonna be four times as many minutes, so that's gonna be four multiplied by 60, and that is 240 minutes. 28 minutes in seconds, well that's 28 lots of 60. And yes, I think it's more than acceptable to use a calculator here, so that's 1,680 seconds. Two H is a bit tricky. What I would do is I would turn the seconds into minutes first of all. So 3,600 divided by 60. 3,600 divided by uh, 60 uh, gives us a total of um, I'm trying to do this in my head at the moment, but obviously you'd be using a calculator, is 60. And then we want to convert this uh, number of minutes into hours, and we know that 60 minutes is one hour. 336 hours in weeks. Well, first of all, I would be converting it into days. So 336 divided by 24 is um, how many days? So 336 divided by 24 is 14 days, and we know that 14 days is two weeks. Three weeks in hours, well, I would turn um, see that as three lots of seven days. So that is 21 days, and we know that there's 24 hours in a day, so 21 multiplied by 24, that comes to 504 hours. Moving on to question three, um, again, we can use a calculator, but there's not much call for it here really, because um, it's either a question of just uh, leaving the answer as it is or adding 12. Um, remember that um, any time in the morning just is left alone, but in the afternoon we would uh, add 12 to the hours uh, from one o'clock onwards. So uh, 3.45 a.m., 24 hour clock, since that's an a.m. time is just 0.3.45, for a PM 345, we're going to add 12 to the 3, so that's 1545. This is an AM time, but as we've got two digits, we don't need to stick a zero in front, so that's just 1115. 
PM time, we're going to add 12, so that is 20, 20. Another PM time, so we're going to add 12 to the 4, so that's 16, 45. 5.25 a.m. as it's a.m. and it's a single digit we'll just stick a zero in front of the five so 0, 0.525 uh, 12.40 is a p.m. Um, we only add the 12 from one o'clock uh, onwards so 12.40 is simply 12.40 but for 12.10 in the morning uh, remember midnight is 0, 0 so 10 past midnight is 0, 0, 0010 the G and H potentially a little bit confusing there uh, 2.30 p.m. we're just going to add the 12 to the 2 so that's 14.30 and another p.m. for J so we're going to add 12 to the 9 so that is 21.50. For question 4 we're doing the opposite so if uh, if we've got 13 or more we're going to be subtracting 12 from the number. So 15.25 take away 12 is 3.25 and that's 3.25 p.m. 18.40 we're going to take away 12 that is 6.40 p.m. 9.45 or that is simply 9.45 a.m. Anything less than 13 will just leave as it is. So 0.820, that's less than 13. So that is 8.20 a.m. This is a bit of a tricky one. It's 5 past 12, uh, but is it midnight or is it midday? Well, remember midnight is 0. Uh, zero, 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 zero. So this is five past midnight. Now, this is now a morning time. Remember, midnight is when PM becomes AM. I know for a lot of us, uh, 12.05 seems like a late night, but it's actually a very early morning in terms of time. Uh, 23.55, we're going to take away 12 from the 23, so that's 11.55. 3.30 is, or 0, 0.3.30, that's 3.30 in the morning, so 3.30 a.m. 10.45 that's before midday so that's 10.45 a.m. 16 is greater than 13 so that is means we're going to need to take off the 12 so 16 minus 12 is 4 so that's 4.10 and that's p.m. of course and subtracting 12 from 17 tells us that is 5.35 and because we've had to subtract 12 therefore it must have been an afternoon time. Question number five so these are times which are in 24 hour clock time and we need to turn them into 12 hour clock. So if the hours are 13 or more, we just need to subtract 12 from them. So 21, that's above 13, subtract 12 from 21, that is nine. And because we needed to subtract the, the 12, that means it's an PM time. 11.45, that's less than 13. So that is therefore an AM time, no need to subtract anything from it. Uh, 0400, zero, 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 that is less than 13, so that is a morning time of 4 a.m. 15 is greater than 13, so I'm going to subtract the 12. 15 minus 12 is 3, and because I'm subtracting the 12, that is a p.m. time. And 0, zero 0055, these ones are a bit complicated. Remember, midnight is 0, zero so this is, uh, well, I suppose 55 minutes past midnight or 5 to 1. Um, so that is 12.55 and remember that as soon as the clock strikes midnight we are now in morning time. I know that midnight might seem like a late night rather than an early morning but uh, the day starts at 12 a.m. So we are now just uh, writing down um, the time shown on these analog clocks. The small hands on the 4, the big hands on the 12 so that is 4 o'clock. Here the uh, red hand is just past the 6 and the uh, bigger hand is on the 4, so that is 5, 10, 15, 20, that's 20 past 6, otherwise known as 620. The big hand's on the 6, so that's a half past, and the red hand is between 10 and 11, so that is a half past 10, otherwise known as 1030. And here, um, because, well, some people struggle with these because it's beyond the half past, so now we're counting minutes to the hour. So this is 5 minutes to the hour, 10, 15, 20, 25 minutes to the hour, and it's 25 minutes to the next hour, which is 10. So that is 25 to 10. That's how you'd say the time, although writing it down again is slightly different. I mean, telling the time can be uh, quite confusing, just going to any secondary school, and you'll be amazed at how many kids can't tell the time. Um, they, a lot of kids would probably just say that this is uh, 35 past nine, and that's exactly how you write it, is 9.35, but you should say that as 25 to 10. Question number seven, 
how long does it take Abraham to get from home to the station? Well, he leaves home at five, gets to the station at 5.20, so that is 20 minutes. How long does Abraham spend in Barcelona airport? Well, he arrives at Barcelona, Barcelona airport at um, 11.25 and the bus to the resort leaves at 12.25. So it's 35 minutes from 11.25 to midday plus the 15 to quarter past 12 so 35 plus 15 is 50 minutes how long after boarding the train does Abraham board a bus so uh, well we can assume I think we have to assume that he boards the train the moment the train leaves which is 530 and he uh, we're looking for when he next bo uh, boards a bus which again we'll just assume is this time here. So what is the difference between 5.30 and 12.15? So I would probably round this up to six o'clock and this down to 12 o'clock. So we've got a 30 minute gap there. We have six hours there and we have another 15 minutes there. So if we add all these bits and pieces together, we've got six hours plus 45 minutes, so that's six hours and 45 minutes. How long does Abraham's whole journey take? Well, it takes from five until 13.30. So what's the difference between 13 and five? That is a difference of eight. So 13.30 and five is eight and a half hours. So that's eight hours and 30 minutes. On to question number eight. So Eleanor has a number of important meetings to go to starting at 9 a.m. Her first meeting is one hour and 15 minutes long. If the meeting starts at nine, what time does it finish? So all we need to do is to add one hour and 15 to nine o'clock. So let's add one hour first. That would take us up to 10 a.m. Then add the 15 minutes, it takes me to 10.15. After her first meeting, she then gets a drink from a coffee shop, which takes 20 minutes. So what time is it after her drink? So all we need to do is add 20 minutes to 10.15, or 15 plus 20 is 35, so 10.35. Eleanor's second meeting lasts two hours, 30 minutes. What time does it end? So all we need to do here is add two hours, 30 to 10.35. Let's add two hours, first of all. Um, so 10 plus two is 12.35, so it's now 12.35 plus 30 minutes. Now, probably the easiest thing is to uh, is to chop the 30 minutes into uh, 25 minutes and five minutes because 25 minutes added onto the 35 takes me up to one o'clock. And then I need to add that the other five minutes onto that. So that would take me up to 105. So 105 p.m. or if you're giving, 20, if you're going to give it in 24 hour clock time, then that would be 13.05. I don't think the question states whether it needs to be 12 or 24 hour. She then takes lunch, which takes one hour. So what time does she finish lunch? Well, that's simply an hour after uh, 105. So that'd be 2.05 or 14.05 in 24 hour clock. Her final meeting runs for two hours. So all you need to do is add two hours onto these and then add a, another 30 minutes for the ride home. So let's add on the two hours first. That's 4.05 and then 4.05 plus the 30 will take me to 4.35 or 16.35 if we're using 24 hour clock time. Question number nine. So how frequently do trains leave Marble Arch? Well, one leaves at 9.01, 9.12, 9.23. So what is the difference between 01 and 12? That's a difference of 11 minutes. Let's double check. If we add 11 to 12, we get 23, perfect. How long does it take to get from Oxford Circus to Liverpool Street? So 9.04 to 9.16, 16 minus four, that's 12 minutes. Andy gets on a train at Bond Street. So I'll just highlight Bond Street. And he wants to meet a friend at bank and he wants to meet a friend at bank by 9.50. So this train, uh, this train will be too late. So he needs to get this one here, meaning You'll need to board the train that um, leaves Bond Street at 9.36.
Um, okay, so there's a five minute delay at Holborn on Andy's train. So therefore, he, that means he's going to leave. Uh, he's going to arrive at bank five minutes late. So he's going to arrive at bank at bank at nine fifty one. Uh, so no, he can't get to bank by nine fifty, unfortunately. Question number ten. This is a timetable of a weekend conference on technology. Each session lasts the same amount of time. How long is that? Well, nine to eleven. That's just two hours. Annie attends how we use our screens and white hat hackers. How much time does she have between these sessions? Well, this one ends at 11. This one starts at 14.30. So um, 14 minus the 11 is three. So 14.30 minus 11 is three and a half. So that's three hours and 30 minutes. Can Annie attend technology and the law? And is DCMS up to speed on tech? If it takes 20 minutes to go between them. Uh, well, technology and the law finishes at 11. The next session starts at 11.15. That's only 15 minutes after 11 o'clock. So if it takes 20 minutes to go from one to the other, then um, Annie will be late. Um, so she can't attend it. Annie attends five sessions overall. How long did she spend in conference sessions? Well, we know each conference session was two hours. So that's five times two. So that is 10 hours. Question number six, what is the cheapest day to travel from Harrogate to London? Well, all we need to do here is just look at the calendar and just find the day with the lowest price on it. Um, there's, I can see a few 59s and we do also have a, a 48. Uh, is there anything less than 48? Uh, there is not. So therefore the 5th of January is the cheapest day to travel from Harrogate to London. Tony wants to travel to London on a Thursday so uh, and she wants to travel for the least money possible. So which day should she choose? So here are the Thursdays, 59, 59, 49, 74. So therefore she should choose the 20th of January. Moving on to part C. Tony wants to travel back on the Saturday after she leaves. Now we'd already selected from the previous question that she was gonna leave on uh, Thursday the 20th. Given that the prices from London to Harrogate are the same as prices from Harrogate to London, should she still choose to travel on the day you selected? So we chose um, Thursday the 20th. That means she's returning on the Saturday where it will cost 99. So what if she left on uh, the week before so it would be £10 more expensive on the way out and it would be £5 cheaper so overall she's that, that would not be cost effective uh, if we look at the week before £59 that's £10 more expensive and the night is the same so that that uh, this sort of first full week of January is no good either and if we take a look at um, the third week it's more expensive on the Thursday and only a tiny bit less expensive on the Saturday. Um, so yes, she she should still travel um, on the um, Thursday the 20th. So under the delay repay scheme, if a train is 15 to 30 minutes late, you're eligible for 50% of the value of the train ticket in compensation. It's pretty generous. And if it's more than 30 minutes late, you're eligible for 100%. It's even more generous. So using the dates you picked in part C, so that is uh, the £49 on the Thursday and the £99 on the Saturday. How much compensation is Tony entitled to if her first train is 20 minutes delayed? So 20 minutes delay means 50% off. So what is 50% of 49? Well, that is half of 49 and half of 49 is £24.50. Just type into your calculator 49 divided by two. And if the train back is 40 minutes delayed, that means she'll get a full refund of the 99. So the total compensation is 99 plus 24 pounds 50, which is 123 pounds and 50 pence.